The views and opinions expressed on any program are those of the persons appearing on the program and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of the New Media Factory. Some programs on this network might include strong images and language and may not be suitable for all audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. This episode of Hands On is brought to you by Sarah Sal Football Club. Tell me, what is football for you? Wow, football. That's my life, you That's my life. That's my life revolves around sport. That's it. I mean, everything is there. It's not football, it's nothing else. How <laughs> guapo naman noon! Welcome everybody to another episode of Hands On. It's the 11th episode already. And I know I do this a lot, but I'm really excited for this episode. Um, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people have been excited as well. Our Twitter has been exploding lately with questions. Um, yeah, we're going to get to that in just a little while. But of course, we're going to start off with Football 101, as we normally do. Before we get to that, thank you once again. And shout out to Sarah LaSalle Football Club for supporting the show. Uh, LGR um, for uh, hooking us up with our, 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 our nice, Little shirts here, awesome stuff. All right, Coach Hans, we're going to get started with Football 101, and we promised last week that we were going to get to disciplinary sanctions. We're going to be talking about the yellow card today. Yeah. All right, now. But before we go there, yeah. uh, just let me want to congratulate Leo Ray Jansson, Moncho Garcia, Globe, Ali Rojas, and Coach Dolfo for doing for staging the right the fundraiser in Bacolod last uh, week, uh, last Saturday. Yeah, how did that turn out? Uh, it was successful. Mm. Well, look, the, 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 the result was Archers won by 2 nil. Okay, one goal each. And the, that, that didn't really matter to us, but uh, what, what mattered to us greatly was we were able, they were able to raise uh, some cash for the victims of Yolanda. Awesome. And this was, uh, I think, organized by some students of uh, USLS. Oh, of La Salva So nice. congrats for that endeavor, and hopefully... Uh, others can do the same. Yeah. All right, let's Absolutely. go. All right, let's do this. All right, we're going to be talking about yellow cards. Now, if you are unaware of how the rules go in football, um, if you commit um, a particular infringement, you can get a caution. That would be a yellow card. After which, um, you could get another yellow card and then you'd be sent off from the game. You could get also a straight red card depending on uh, the severity of your uh, infringement. But the yellow card is basically a caution, meaning that if you're given a yellow card, you better... Uh, watch yourself. You're walking on a tightrope for the rest, rest of the match. Anything else that you do similar to the offense that you committed means you might get sent off from the game. What people don't understand, the yellow card, once you get a yellow card and the second yellow card doesn't have to be with the, for the same infringement. Right, right, correct. Okay, so you can still get two yellows for two different uh, Absolutely. Uh, infringements. Now, the first one that we got to is unsporting behavior. You'll see a lot of that in the reports of the of the referees uh, <laughs> in the ref's report on sporting behavior. Yeah. But most of the time, unsporting behavior would be just like tripping on an opponent or pulling a jersey or impeding the, the, the movement of, a, of an opponent. But there are certain rules that is already there for yellow cards. Yellow cards are given to for minor, okay? Minor fouls. There's a minor and there's a major. If you remember, I said in the previous uh, right. episodes, there are two different types of fouls, minor and major. Yellow cards, we go for the uh, minor fouls. So, on sporting behavior, a lot, of, a lot of things that happen on the field is usually called an unsporting behavior. Like I said earlier, tripping, pulling. Excessive uh, force. Excessive force, yeah. okay. We go back, the next one is dissent by word or action. It doesn't happen automatically, you know. So, uh, some, most of the referees are maybe a little bit uh, more patient when it comes to that. Yeah. Or, just scared <laughs> to give it out right away. Yeah. Okay. Dissenting means uh, like if somebody, you know, the ref calls a, a, a foul on you, but if you say, oh, tang ina mo ref, hindi naman naga, that can be given a yellow card right away. Yes. Maybe even a red card. Right. Yeah. Okay. And if you continuously say the same things every time you're calling a foul, of course, yung makukulitan talaga yung referee, kahit now, kahit man tayo eh. Pag may makulit na tao, eh, nakakasar na. Baka sunod, suntokin mo na, hindi ba? Now, the interesting so, thing about this, though, like using foul language or whatever, sometimes yes. you'll see on TV that players are 
actually spewing oh, yeah. words at the referee yeah. and don't let that go yep. don't let that go simply because they understand that there's a lot of passion in the game you're there's a lot of pent-up energy yeah. there and sometimes you just have to release it uh, when things don't go your way so sometimes they let that go but sometimes you get the yellow card but what people don't understand what people don't know even our local players and officials don't know in the world cup euro cup and all this these things are worse mm. the reason why the players get away with it is because they're from different countries. Oh. So they don't understand. <laughs> you'll see them, you'll see their mouths. You'll, I mean, I understand a little Dutch. So sometimes when I see the World Cup or whatever, the player's right there in front of the face <coughs> of the referee and he's saying some things. Oh. It's not sweet nothings. It just happens a lot. But for local, local tournaments in the Philippines, like local in the Philippines or Malaysia or Singapore, there's no way you can get away with it. Right, right. All right? But here in the Philippines, I'm sorry to say, I'm not insulting the referees, but some are, like the field foreigners and the foreigners here, when they say something, even in English, if it's Scottish or British, they don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> they don't, I'm not insulting, I'm, okay? I'm not insulting before anybody starts saying anything. It, they just don't understand. That's why the coaches or the other players are telling the referees, Ref, minura ka na! Haraparapan, hindi mo pa alam. Ah, talaga? Yeah! You know, the referees says, <laughs> okay, right. next. You know, persistent infringement of laws of the game. Okay? Same like the unsporting behavior like we explained earlier and dissenting. You continue doing the same tackle, tackle, day in, day out, every minute, every hour when the ball's around in your area. Then you, and the referee usually gives verbal warning. Okay? Not all calls or fouls deserve a card. Yeah. Most of the time, the referee would give a verbal warning, okay? Unless it's a very obvious thing, yeah. right? So if you continuously uh, inf uh, infringe on the, on the loss of the game, then maybe the referee will just give you that yellow card. Yeah. It could be like small tackles here and there, you're a little late, but you did it like three, four times. Yeah. The referee will make it known to you that you had done the same thing three, yes. four times, and that's why you're going to get this it. Is what you, we can see a lot of this on, on, on our local mm. uh, games, like in UAP, UFL. Uh, it, it, there's some like that you can see that continuously. Yeah. But we'll get that to the next point because the uh, last games weren't that... <laughs> it wasn't been great for the referees. It wasn't a great coverage <laughs> of the officiating of just. And delaying the start of the play. Delaying the start of the play is not... Guys, restart of the play doesn't mean in the center line. Yeah. That's a kickoff. Restart of the game is, let's say, after an injury or uh, after a foul. It could be a goal or kick. Or after a fair play. Yeah. Could be a goal kick. Okay? When you delay that because uh, your team is ahead mm. and you know that there are only how many minutes left in the game, of course you're going to try to delay. You see a lot of goalkeepers. Nate was given this in one of the internationals. Yeah, uh, in Rizal. He was given the yellow card and also one time, I think in, I don't know what, what country that was. We were, Askas were ahead and he took his sweet time, you know, uh, to, to take his uh, goal kick mm -hmm. and he was given the yellow. And he knows, of course, he knows that. that he Nate? Was, Nate, yes, Nate. Ah, Nate, sorry. Neil. Neil. Etheridge. Nate. We were talking about Nate earlier, so... <laughs> kasalanan ang guest natin yun eh. Kwento, saan ang kwento kanina eh. Neil uh, Etheridge, okay? Even Edsa. Yeah, 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 for sure. I think Edsa got the... Oh, was it Mongolia, I think? Possibly. Well, I can't recall. I, I can't recall. Yeah, if I remember right. Okay. Right. Now, failure to respect the required distance. Okay. This is for corner kicks. Any free kick, indirect or direct. Uh, you're supposed to have 10 yards. Yeah. That's why you see the referees during a foul. The referee will, will call out the the, 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 the the players that will make the wall to move back 10 yards. If you insist on coming closer and closer, the wall, if the wall, not just an individual player, let's go there first, the wall. The referee will give the yellow card to the first player closest to him. Not necessarily the whole wall, but the player closest to him will be given the yellow card. Now, what I don't understand is, I've seen a lot of it here. UFL, NCAA, UAP, and everything else. There's a new rule now during a foul that no player is allowed to stand in front of the goal at any given time once the, the whistle is blown. Really? Yes. But it, it still happens. You know, the, you'll see it. Everybody does it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I'm saying I was been telling the officials of the referees committee. That's not allowed. You can't stand in front of the goal? Not, not like before. You can. To delay. 
Ah, the ball. The ball. Ah, I thought you said the goal. Sorry. Right. So in front because, of the ball. Yeah. Because, folks, an indirect free kick doesn't need the referee's call. Right. Okay? An indirect free kick <coughs> excuse me, doesn't need uh, the referee. You see the referee point to his whistle? If you see the referee point to his whistle, that means that's yep. a supposedly, supposedly a direct free kick. You have to wait for the whistle. An indirect can be restarted right away. Put the ball down, bang, and play. Mm. Okay? That's why it's also a shout out to all the coaches, those who think they know their business. An indirect free kick, you don't need the referee's uh, whistle to start. Right. Okay? So, free kicks, corner kicks, corner kicks, if you notice in an official football turf pitch, in the corner you'll see a line, yeah. there's a drawn line that is 10 yards away from the corner, all right? That is where the opposing player should stand, not in front of that. Yeah. Standing in front of that can merit a yellow card. Correct. If that player insists to be in that space. Okay? So, uh, giving the required, allowing the required uh, space of 10 yards during all of these uh, free kicks, even corner uh, throw-ins. You, you can stay in front, yes, but you cannot, st if once you step on the line, on the sidelines, yeah. when the well, uh, player's doing a throw-in, and you're pu putting your hand up like this and like that, <laughs> Bawal it's not allowed. Bawal There's a player in the UAP, in the women, I will not say who, who loves doing these free kicks, uh, throw-ins. She's jumping there like crazy. Need a basketball. Stop it because you look so <laughs> foolish. You really look so foolish. And referees, do your job because you got a fucking reminder. Right. All right, very quickly, let's get through these two. Entering the field without permission, obviously, that you can't do that. You have to wait. If there's a substitution, you have to wait for the guy coming off to step off the field before you step in. Yeah. And the second one, deliberately leaving the field without ref's permission. This happened to Nate Berkey in the semifinals of the UFL Cup. Um, he went off uh, during extra time when uh, to come off and take a piss. He didn't ask for the referee's permission. So I remember that. obviously when he came back, referee's like, dude, what are you doing? Yellow card, right? Yeah. And then he committed another infringement later that yeah. in that game and he got sent off. So simple things like this, you have to remember it, you know? So Quickly, entering field of, without permission, some of them don't understand. Yeah. What Jing is saying is, when you are injured oh, yeah, and the referee has told you to move out or the stretcher has been brought out, you need to wait at the center line with the fourth official. Years back, decades, you can enter from one side you come in. Right, right. From any side. Now you got to go back to the center line where the fourth official is going to hold on to you and wait for the referee to call you, come in. Yep. Some people have seen this in the last few weeks. People are wondering how come the player cannot, he's not allowed to come in, but he's already there, he's already there, he's already there. Uh, you need to get the play go ongoing first. Right. Before the referee will allow you. Okay. The player cannot just enter. Right. Now, the, 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 the deliberately leaving field, whether you're injured or not, when you drink, you cannot step out on the field. When you drink, you reach out. You can have one foot outside the field to pick up the, 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 the water or what have you. But if you walk, just walk out and do it, even during breaks. Yeah. But here, or even in international, they do allow that sometimes. Because, you know, especially if the games are played at one o'clock in the afternoon or three o'clock, that, 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 that much is given by the referees. Right. As long as the fourth official and the first assistant referee is paying attention to what happens there. Okay, and I'll just remind the players to get out here. All right, before All right. we move on to red cards, obviously handballs are, uh, if you're intentionally handling the ball, it is, uh, it's, it's an interesting one because it could be a yellow card, it could be a red card. Now, there are certain situations where it merits a red card and it merits a yellow card. Very recently, there was a game, Kaya versus Global. This was just last Saturday where OJ Porteria was sent off um, with a straight red for pulling off uh, one of these... Uh, Hand, hand of, of God. God, hand of God moves that which Maradona made famous when he uh, headed in a ball using his hand. Right now, um, OJ had a reaction. He was in the area. He pushed his arm out, and the ball ended up in the back of the net. Now everybody thought that Kai had scored a goal, but um, the referee, the assistant referee, was uh, waving his flag. He talked to the referee, and they said that he had handled the ball deliberately to send it into the goal. And they ended up sending. 
OJ Porteria off with a red card, which is a mistake. That is a technical mistake by the referee, simply because uh, deliberate handball, uh, trying to score a goal, merits only a yellow card. FIFA is very clear on that in their rule book. So um, no way that could have been a red card. You will only get a red card with a handball if you are deliberately attempting to stop, stop. a goal. Right? So if you're at the goal line, the goalkeeper is somewhere else, you're a defender, the ball's going to head in, you stop it with your hand, that's a red card offense because you're denying a clear goal scoring opportunity. So if trying to score or if you're just attempting to, to break up a pass, that's only a yellow card. Clear? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So there you go. Um, should we go to red cards? All right. Let's very go quickly, quickly. Very quickly. Red cards, like I said, are major fouls. Mm. Like, okay. The number one serious foul play. Very obvious. Speaking of what OJ has done. In the previous UAP women's match, uh, my team was dealt a big blow when the goalkeeper of the opposing team charged my striker outside the box without trying to get the ball because mm. the ball was up in the air and went straight for my player. My player had to stay down for quite a few number of minutes. Funny thing is, it still ended up goal kick for the opposing team <laughs> and no warning whatsoever, no card whatsoever. That's goal scoring chance. Yeah. A goal scoring chance when you're, you stop outside the box, inside the box, what have you, that merits a red card. Yes. Okay, that's a serious foul play. Yeah. Okay, what OJ did was no serious foul play because it was just that, the hand. Yeah. So FIFA rules, like the Jinx said earlier, very clear. The red card for handling a ball when there's a goal scoring chance is when you are on the defensive side. Correct. Okay. Violent conduct, do I have to explain? <laughs> All right, funny thing, again, let me explain. I was a victim again. Uh, UAP last week, I think, or two weeks ago, or whatever. No, 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 first round. Right in front of the referee. Striking a player, folks, is not just the fist or the hand. Kicking is also considered striking yeah. a player. All right? My player was kicked while down in front of the referee and lo and behold, there's only a yellow card. So I asked, I don't mind striking. Okay, well anyway, that's it. Violent conduct is, uh, <laughs> tripping can be considered violent conduct, goal scoring chance, and the tackle is high. Right. Okay, like, uh, uh, or jumping on a player from behind, jumping with both legs forward to stop the player from continuously on his position towards the goal. Uh, a slight tackle, but with the other leg up by the thigh. Yeah. That's too high, that's a no-no. Slight tackle, your feet are on the ground, covering, trying to cover the ball. So, a slight tackle, some people just say, that was just a slight tackle. That's why I get so fucking pissed off when I see some coaches uh, complain, Eh, hindi naman yun ano, slight tackle lagi na. Pero hindi nang nakita, nakita nang, usually the linesman will be done to see that. Right. The assistant referees will usually see that. When the, f the leg of the, the defensive player tackling is very high. Yeah. Oh, number one, number one before was England. For all your Brits, you want to contest me? Go ahead. Years, decades ago, that was the play there. Very rough. The tackles were so high. Mm. Slight tackling was not on the ground. Just up on the balls, man. Or by the thigh. High, upper thigh, okay? So, these are the things of the, uh, the, 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 that gets a red card. Spitting an opponent. They don't have to explain that. <laughs> That's ridiculous. But people right? will be asking, why is it there is a, in the rule of FIFA it's spitting? Because people Because that's this. degrading. Yeah. And FIFA, among all other uh, 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 sports uh, association organizations, uh, FIFA is very uh, keen on, on sportsmanship. Right. All right? They're, they're the first one to say no to racism and all this. And spitting is very degrading. Right. It's just like a slap. Actually, it's worse than a slap. Okay. Whew, that was tough. That was a long list of yellow cards and red card infringements, and we've got through it, I think, pretty Let's go to the league, really. Pretty, pretty nice, yeah? Like huh? All right. So, we're going to take a short break. We're going to be right back. <laughs> uh, we're just going to remind you guys how to, you know, download the podcasts on your iPhones and your iTouches and on your, all, all your devices. And we'll be right back with our guests for the day. Stick around. We'll be right back. Hi. They say nothing in this world is free, and for the most part, that's true. But here at NMF Network, all shows are indeed 100% free. And as an added feature, you have the option to subscribe to all your favorite programs, also at no charge. Why should you subscribe? 
By subscribing, you no longer have the hassle of delays when you stream the program. You also don't need to keep checking our site to see if your favorite programs are up because they'll automatically be uploaded to your device as soon as it's available. Here's how to do it. For those people with Apple mobile devices, first you need to download the podcast app. Once you download the podcast app, open it and you should be taken to the featured page. Now, you look for the store button. Hit the store button and after doing that, hit the search button. Put your cursor on it and type New Media Factory. All our shows should automatically appear. Pick your favorite or favorites. Open it and hit subscribe. And that's it. You're done. Congratulations and welcome to the New Media Factory family. Welcome to the New Media Factory. Yeah, that's right. All right, folks. This is it, okay? A lot of people have been clamoring for this and finally we've, we've, we've gotten the man on the show. Um, truly one of our most fascinating characters in Philippine football. The true polarizing figure, you know? A lot of people love him, a lot of people Didn't hate him. Shade Jim. <laughs> a lot of people love him, a lot of people hate him. Uh, one thing is for sure, he is an interesting man. Yeah, we can't deny that fact. I uh, welcome to the show, Coach Ernie Nieres. How are you doing, sir? Pretty good, pretty good. Uh, Does that mean that I've what, taken the crown away from the <laughs> I yeah. think that's okay. You can have it. You can have it. And of course, joining us as well is Sir Philbert Alcunos. Welcome to the show, yeah, sir. Like All right, I, I have to ask you this question, Coach yes. Ernie. Like I said, you're a true polarizing figure. I've heard People call you a genius mm. for, for winning the, the, the double mm. with, uh, with Stallion and uh, a true proponent mm. or a promoter of Philippine football. Others will criticize and say that you're overrated uh, mm. and that you are, um, how should you say, too aggressive when it comes to your attacking mm. of people who criticize you. Mm. Uh, my question is, as Coach Ernie Nieres, how do, you, how do you describe yourself is my question. Uh, I'm a grandfather. <laughs> yes. Proud, proud. Important thing. So right. I'm a father. Uh, I'm a coach. Uh, a lot of people forget that. Before anything else, I'm a CEO. So a lot of people in football don't know me as a businessman. Mm. They just know me as a coach. A lot of people in, in my industry doesn't know me as a coach. They just know me as Ernie. Right. So when you talk about me having a polarizing image. If you talk to my customers and everybody, they'll say, what? We don't see him as that type of a person. You know, I think Philbert will be more <laughs> aggressive than me when it comes to the business side. But anyway, I guess that's, you know, everybody's entitled to their, their own opinion. Uh, I, I, I wear my emotions on my sleeves. Uh, I say it the way I see it. If they don't like it, that's not, you know, I'm not in here for popularity. I do things the way I feel it's right. I don't do anything that's illegal or immoral. Okay, so I focus on my principles. Uh, integrity is very important to me. When people come after me and criticize me, I don't care, that's their opinion. And I respect that. Just don't state it as a fact. You know, if you're saying my opinion of Coach Ernie, he's, he's an asshole, well, pick a number, fall in line, I don't care. But if you start stating it as a fact, well, I, I'm not an asshole, I'm a person. I have an asshole, but I'm a person. <laughs> You know what I mean? That's the part that gets me pissed off. I know off. somebody's got that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so when, when you start coming after my players, that's when it gets really tough. Uh, you can come after me, you can criticize me, you can criticize everything I'm doing, but just don't do it going through my players and sometimes my children. So that's, I mean, who wouldn't get pissed if you do that? I mean, if somebody would fault me for something and they say, ah, see, my players, you know, then that's when I get very aggressive and very uh, personal. It gets very personal. I get very possessive when it comes to my players because they have nothing to do with that decision or that opinion. So when people start to pull things, to pull other people into the discussion, then it, you know, that's when I kind of, it becomes very personal to me. But if it's just them not liking me, I think a lot of people have been tweeting a lot of these stuff. I don't care. You know, that's their opinion of me. Like you said, you know, if, for those people who support me, I'm always going to do my best. I'm never going to change. For those people who don't like me or asking me to do this and that, forget you. You know, don't hold your breath because you're just going to die eventually. <laughs> I don't care. Ernie, uh, when I talk to the media people that surrounds the football community, mm. when you know them also, it seems like you are 
how do you say, distancing yourself from these guys. Mm. Uh, well, I don't know because I don't remember anymore what they wrote about or whatever because that, these were mm. ages ago. Yeah. Okay, but why people are telling me why does Ernie always react so aggressively when you know you are in the limelight already? Like every one of us are always in the limelight right now. Mm. Even Philbert is because you're seen on TV, you're coaching, you're managing <laughs> the Alditas, uh, you're coaching and managing a, a EFL team and all that. The dapat ganon na mangyari kasi kaya sa daw yung katulad sa PBA yung mga pagmaintenance tinitira media yung tao pa yun ganon. I said, why don't you ask him? <laughs> so what what's your take on that? I mean, Ern, paano what's like that when when they hit you where below the belt? Is it below the belt? No, not really. I mean, if if like you know some some you know a lot of I think that's kind of unfair for I think it's just, just a select few people. You know, who do that? Because those people who call me and email me and ask me for interviews, sometimes they'll come to my house and come to training. They have access to me. I don't say no. Okay? But when people start writing up something and making it look like they interviewed me, instead of just taking tweets or something I wrote on Facebook, then that's kind of stupid. You know, it doesn't mean you're a sports writer. You have the authority to write whatever you want. You have to be responsible. Do some research. You know. Get the facts, you know. So it, when when it becomes that way, and I'm talking to that person who pretended to interview me, then uh, then you're, you're, you don't start off in the you know right frame of mind right away. But if if they're very open, it doesn't matter how. Uh, I, I just had uh, one person interview me uh, a while back, and he you know uh, his name is Eric Gimson, and he goes, Coach, I'm going to ask you really tough questions. I said, Sure, sir, come to my training. He goes, uh, When? Uh, tomorrow. Oh, because I thought that what people say is you never like to be interviewed. No, they never ask me. But people who ask me, I mean, you've asked me. I think we have, I've shared your, my opinion. I told you I don't like your opinion. But just the same thing. Yeah. But after that, it's nothing. So I don't, I don't understand, folks. But well, yeah, well, like just like me. <laughs> I'm decades ahead of him. So, but look at him. I'm because I have my hair. See, Ernie. No more hair. You go na nakilaw si Ernie years ago. Para may book pa yan eh. Back to nature na. Back to yeah, nature. Ano may book? Ano ang mga pictures niya na magkalaban kami sa field ah? Oh, mayroon pa akong pictures niya. Yeah. You text ka no coach. You don't. Don't, don't you dare. <laughs> Katawo ko pa siya ng kuya Hans. Pag ina ginawa, ginawa na ni Bob Guerrero yan ang nilabas siya. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> Yung mga silya. Anyway, no. Let's go now to uh, let's start with the UFO first. How did that? The stallions thing come out. Was it your idea? Was it Philbert? Was it J.R. Robles? How did it come about? I mean, how did the team representing Iloilo come about? And then the, who gave the name stallions? How did it come up with stallions? Then we'll start from there. Then let's move up until sure. today. I I think you know our team president <laughs> will be able to answer that question better. <clears throat> anyway, the stallions football club started in Barotak Nuevo, mm -hmm. Iloilo. Um, it, it happened that most after every time they play, they would drink this stallion drink, and <laughs> that's uh, how it came out. Uh, have uh, the stallion energy drink. Energy drink. Energy drink. Energy drink. Power drink. Power drink. Stallion. Yes. Ane pa. Ane. Alam mo ba yano? Okay. Ane. They they would drink that. Everybody they get together. Usually they have they would uh, only fellowship. Drink that. that fellowship, yeah, that's what they only drink. It's a fellowship after uh -huh. the games. Tangina pare, wala halong gin yun na. May halong gin sa loo. But that, uh, yung gin ko. Uh, ayos. <laughs> oh, that was. So they JR Robles put up the stallions. That's way back. I think three years ago to to join the UFL. Yeah, in second uh, division. Second yeah. division. Yeah. yeah. I remember. And he, then he was asked or. It was, it was just his idea to come about because we heard of it. Yeah, yes. it was either us. I was, me and Ernie were supposed to put up a team here. It was Gilligan's but, uh, before. It was Gilligan's before. So it's the same before. players. Eh? It's okay. the same players. Okay. So yeah, since they were from Barotak, okay, with due respect. So I, I let JR handle the, the team. So he put up the team, joined the second division. Along the way, uh, we came in. Uh, he asked us to join to help because Expenses is not, it doesn't come that cheap basically. So, uh, so you guys came after, yeah, yeah, after, okay, yeah. okay. We came after, uh, then we said yes, okay, because we, we knew the players also. We, we, they were already in second division, it was towards yeah. the end of the second division yeah. when we 
came in. Yeah. I can't remember that long. Coach Bob Bayona was a coach at that time in the beginning. Oh, that I remember. Yeah. I can only remember what, a week or two weeks ago. Uh-huh. Anyway. It's always a sign of old age. No, no, I'm not a sign of old age. Just try to play it smart. Okay, go ahead. So that, that's how it all started. So we came in, we joined forces, and we. We always would talk to each other, me, JR, Ernie, on decisions on on everything, basically. Players, uh, the the plays, and all, all this. But for, of course, with due respect, Ernie's the coach. We respect him more. That's his technical knowledge. When it comes to taking care of the players, especially the foreigners, that's me and JR's department. Okay. You know, when we make decisions, even in player selection, same thing. I'm the coach, I make recommendations to the board. And then, you know, we have to agree. And we always agree to disagree. So it's something nice because as friends, we can sit down and talk. But if I want somebody in, they say no. It's How many are you like when you discuss fin- in finality? Three. We actually don't discuss if it's just me and him. We say, oh, talk, talk, but we get there. opinions from some friends mm-hmm. who go, um, coaches, the other coaches mm-hmm. in the team, si Marjo, Aliado, si Richard Medea, yeah. Jesse says. Well, we even ask the other players also, the senior players. Mm-hmm. Everybody's opinions, basically. So it matters what's the opinions of everybody. Yeah. Maybe Especially the, our team captain, especially... Yeah. Sometimes the three of us may be wrong yeah. or they have something else to say, so we have to factor that in. Also. All right. Uh, people are wondering, Earn. Uh, what about Earn? Puta na Earn, baka isipin mo, you are Earn. Ay, yun eh. Earn eh. Yung. Okay, you, you did a double. You're the first one to do a mm-hmm. double, League and Cup. No, not the first. Not the first? Who's first? Air Force did it. Air Force did it? Yeah, in 2010. They did it as well. So I told you, I can only remember about it. We did Cup and League Sorry. as well. No, yeah. we did Cup and League. Air Force did league and then cup. Um, Not one whole season. Yeah, that's two separate, but hindi pa one Two different right? seasons. That's two different seasons. I, I guess okay, it uh, doesn't anyway, matter. Doesn't doing, matter. Doing it, you know, if winning, you try to do it, yeah. try to win it once. That's hard. If you win twice, it doesn't matter what. Yeah. One. Yes, yes. That's, yeah, besides, that's not where I'm leading to. Uh, okay. Nothing to do with the winning. No, uh, people are wondering. Some are me wondering, of course, just like anybody else. You are the club that has always dropped the most number of players. So, we're not going to touch the roof. That's mm. old issue already. But the others, like uh, the first time you dropped so many were mostly locals, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. The ones that ended up in the Air Force, yes. then three with us in the Archers. Archers. Yeah. Then the next time you dropped were mostly foreigners. foreigners. Yeah. Then now you drop mostly foreigners, foreigners also. Yeah. How come you guys, uh, you don't want to stay? Because most of the clubs, yeah. Uh, usually have the same core. Continuity yeah. yung inahabol nila. Uh-huh. But with you guys, Stallions, nagpapalit kayo talaga. I mean, that's more than, more than half the <laughs> Well, I, the funny fact is, of the population of professional players in the <laughs> UFL, <laughs> 20% <laughs> Professionals. Okay, okay. The real players, professionals. No, players in the UFL. Mm. Yung population of players. You have 19, first before division. 10. First division. So you have 25 players. So yeah. 20... 20% of those players were former Stallion players. So we supply 20% mm. to the league mm. for whatever reason, releasing players and what have you. But, you know, it, we, it's not something that we do consciously. Uh, in the first season when we did that, uh, our players wanted, you know, we wanted, we had an opportunity to, to go to Air Force. And there was a batch of them who wanted to explore that opportunity. And we couldn't say no. You know, there was something that which Air Force was going to be able to provide and something that we couldn't, so we allowed that uh, to happen. Uh, with some of our players, like with, with the three that went to uh, Archers, uh, we were, they were approached by uh, Dolfo. And I actually was the one who spoke to Monchu about their compensation and everything. You know, not, not being their agent, but being their coach. And I just asked Monchu, which he agreed, just pay them more than what we're paying yeah, them. I'm, I'm witness to that, uh, I know. So, but, yeah. and plus, it's get, giving them opportunities to start. Because at the time, I already saw that the team was going to be strong, that I won't be able to guarantee starting positions to these players. And I know they're good. So why hold on to them when you know that in the league, we can make the league stronger by allowing these players to go to yeah. other teams? So, yeah, but perfectly. So, but like, I know, like, like regarding Jake Hugo, mm. I was surprised that we were able to get Jake. I, I, did, I, I missed him. him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't want him to go. That's right. That's yeah. what I'm saying. How come, like, Jake? 
Sabi ko, ah, you're releasing Ernie today? Hmm. Baka may most malakas pa dyan. Hmm. Ayun, lokohan kami ni Monchi. Oh. Baka ako muna ng foreigner kasi si Jake local face eh. Hmm. Hindi, hindi pogi. Hindi <laughs> loko ko lang. Pero, I was happy. No, no, I was happy. But don't, I'm unhappy. Because Jake stopped me. Well, that was the original Air Force. coach. He was supposed to go to Air Force, Air Force. to start with. Oh. Tapos hindi natuloy yun. Tapos yeah. eh, kinausap siya ni Manong Chiefy. Pupunta sa Archer. So, okay na. Kasi nandun na yung mindset namin na we allowed him to go eh. Hmm. Diba? Same thing with Tommy. Actually, si Tommy inaanak ko sa kasal. Hmm. Hmm. Okay? So, he came to me and said, Coach, Munta akong archers kasi samahan ko si Jake. Maayos eh. It was very good uh, the way we parted and everything. So, wala, wala problema. Kaya, when we see each other in the field, even after games, I mean, when when Chiffy has his cup in Barota, we actually sponsored it. You know, one of his tournaments. So, it's... And he did from Barota. Eh. Ian. So, we, we don't... Even Ian, it's something that we feel that even though we're competing against each other, we're not. We feel that... We actually, we're not from Iloilo. Where are but, you guys from? Uh, I'm from Tacloban. Oh, okay. I'm okay. Quezon also. So, but we spend more time there than our hometown. We feel like we belong. Uh, at least me. I feel like I, I'm, I'm very comfortable when I... You, 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 that was, the, that was the first season that you guys were in the first division, yeah. right? And then you guys dropped those players. Uh-huh. And understandably, because the next lineup that you guys came out with was very, very strong, yeah. right? Uh, you guys... Uh, brought in Waco Cañas, Rufus mm. Sanchez, which I'm going to ask you about yeah. in a little while, sure. how you guys were able to lock those, mm. those players down. Kim Yo Il, the, mm. you had Lee Ju Yong, and uh, Park Bo Bay, yeah. Lee, uh, Lee Wan Yong. Yong. Um, so Don't ask me on Korean names. <laughs> <laughs> Lee Wan Yong. <laughs> That's a, it was a, it was so a, actually a, part of the original batch, huh? Oh, oh the second division, the Koreans. The Koreans. Oh, okay. yeah. but that's why they used to call it Koreans. That's right, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yes, Rufo Sanchez and Wako Kanyas mm. were huge um, additions to the squad. And Jeremy Hearn also. And that's right. And and then you guys brought in um, even Hector Zagi, Diego Barrera yeah. at the la- latter stages of that league. That was the unit that secured the double, mm-hmm. right? Um, I think when 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 uh, Coach Hans asks why there is so much dropping again, the main question is go- coming into this season. You had a double winning team mm. that you let go. Yeah. Mm. So what, what what was the reason? Well, that? We didn't want them to go. I mean, I think to this day, you know, with with Rufo, that's being contested. But before we get to the point, I kind of want to touch on certain things because I, I especially in the end of the season, I heard a lot of things that that uh, Waco was our captain. He was running the whole thing and everything. That's kind of bullshit. Okay. If there was one player who was very important to the squad. Was Coach Yo? I don't call, call Yo-in. him Kim Yo. Uh, Kim, Kim. Yeah. I always call him call him Coach Yo because he was one of my assistants. So that's a very big advantage. Center back. The center back. The center back. He who was can a play the ball 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 ball. Who can play yeah. midfield? He can play everywhere. Yeah. He was key to everything that we did. Yeah. Okay, the awesome. reason why we were Rufo was able to score a lot of goals is because it originated for our system from him. Okay. Yeah. Coming up with a three six one system during that time was actually the discussion between me and him. How are we gonna do this? Well, Coach. We have a lot of midfielders. We have one top striker. Why don't we do it this way? What do you think? So we went to that system. Okay, I just wanted to put that out there because I heard a few things that you know, Rufa and Waco was running the team. They're good players, no question about that, but I don't think they can coach. Okay, so one of the responsibilities, you know that Coach Hunt is, if you're a coach, it's the selection of the players. Identify. Okay, so you identify talent, you know, and if you identify good talent, it doesn't mean you develop that player, but in being able to manage that talent and making coming together as a team is the most important thing. People take that for granted. They think coaching is just X's and O's and telling them, oh, you do this, you do that, and everything. No, it's actually, we spend most of our time doing this, you know, and less of our time in our business. Our wives want to kill us already. You're lucky, you guys are lucky there's no divorce here. Yeah. Hey, let's, let's go to football again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So anyway, uh, and then you were talking about next batch. We, you know, we, these four years. Kaya ka nang sa second honeymoon si Jong na si Jong. Ay Jong, mag recommend na second honeymoon second ano? Lalaki na naman gastos ko. No wala kong pera. Wala yung manager. Okay, go ahead. So anyway, uh, we with the Koreans, two of them uh, from the original batch, uh, Nam and uh, Young Jay, stayed in uh, Iloilo to finish the school. Uh, uh, Lee Ju Yong, actually Lee Ju Yong is an ins- interesting thing. Because we thought that he was staying with us. Between me and Lee and Tito Filbert, he Lee was Lee Ju Yong is the one in Loyola now? Yeah, mm-hmm. staying, number 47. 47. The younger guy with the... Yeah. I mean, okay, okay. I, Scored you know, recently. We were talking, tweeting, 
Facebook and everything. He was in Korea. We're talking, and uh, I guess at that time everything was clear that, I, that he accepted our offer. And I, he told me, "Coach, just send me your contract. I'll sign it." Next thing you know, uh, somebody representing him came and said, "Oh, Coach, can you give it to me?" Well, he's, she's the girlfriend. I can't say no, you know. So I said, "Well, he accepted our offer. She's the so if you okay. want the contract." Then he has, it means he's ready for signature. Yeah. If you still want to consider, why will I send you the contract? Then agree with the proposal. If you don't like the proposal, then we don't have to send the contract. It doesn't have to even get to that stage. Well, no, no, Lee wants it ready. He's signing it. Okay. I send it, and the next thing you know, she goes, oh, Lee's going to consider other options. So that was kind of... Girl from the agent, pa. Ah. Hey. Okay. Uh, are we so, the same girl? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, so... Sali naman ako. Just <laughs> moso, <laughs> ha? <laughs> Wala eh. Uh, we, 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 we knew that these players were being packaged before the season ended. I mean, like it or not, unfortunately, you know, uh, we have the tweet messages, the PMs, you know, packaging these players and saying, this team, we're offering you these players because they don't have any contract with Stallions, so you want to take them. That's how this whole thing kind of came about. And that kind of pissed us off. Wow, so people were like peddling your players? Yeah, ah, yeah. Who was yeah. Who, oh, no, no, who was no, 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 yes. Remember uh, I told you about my yeah, it was, This was packaged, okay, it's very specifically. Okay, Jeremy Hearn, Wajo Cañas, Rufo, uh, uh, Lee, Bube Park, and uh, uh, Lee Wonyong. The six players were being packaged together. How can you guys remember all these names? So, uh, <laughs> 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 commentating. I don't know the team. I don't know the park. You know, and this is a fact because I have the messages. Okay, and that person even apologized to me, saying that, "Oh, I'm sorry, coach." Blah 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 blah. I even talked to Tito Filbert. I said, "Tito Filbert, I don't want to talk to that person anymore." You know what? Uh, there's still because about a year or two. You know that in one of the meetings, I. I also want to brought this up about respect yes. of uh, you know teams, management, yeah. players, coaches. Uh, I think we are not there yet. Maybe fifty percent now, okay? Because, like you just said, because there are a lot of things that's happening behind the backs of management, mm -hmm. club management, team management that we don't know what's happening. Funny thing is, this is the second time or third time I've heard of something about a girlfriend doing. Because I've had, I've had inquiries mm. from a girlfriend <laughs> asking how to do stuff, okay? Uh, I'm not saying it's bad, but at least she asked me how to do it. Uh, and I, only, only way I could tell her was do it professionally. You gotta find out from UFL how it's gonna be done and all that thing, okay? <coughs> I am not against a girlfriend doing deals for the boyfriend, but for you guys, the boyfriends, Get some fucking balls and do it yourself. <laughs> I mean, come on, man. I mean, if you, if, if the girlfriend is like, the, if it's a wife, I don't understand. Girlfriend, come on. That just shows you when you get married, may the force be with you. So, okay. coach, uh, let me put this on record because that's an interesting thing. After the season, we had a team meeting and we offered all our players contracts. Okay, after the season, it was very clear. All of them, we told them who we wanted, and we told them uh, what we could afford to pay. And it was only one player, Coach Yo, who said that, no, I, I'm going to explore other options. Two, two, two players. Ah, two players. So we shook hands. Oh, yeah. And also Lee Wan Yong. Lee Wan Yong. Both Koreans. Yeah. Korea they said, no, 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 no. Lee Wan Yong. Lee Wan Yong went to uh, Lea Lea. 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 Both of them didn't have any contracts in the end of the season. They were free to sign with anybody. OK, also Lee Ju Yong. Uh, so they, Lee Won Young and Coach Kim said, oh, we want to explore other options. No problem. Okay. To this day, they, you know, Lee Won Young would still join us for dinner and, and Lee Ju Young. Yeah, you know, we don't have to worry about it. That's just that. Who would you like to worry about it? If you don't want to stay in that team, Tell it straight to management, talk to the coach straight. Yeah, we never... Huwag <laughs> tira, huwag nyo sabihin o chichismis nyo sa iba. Mm. You know, what's worse is, for like for me, let's say, as a technical director, I hear stuff from other people. Let's say I hear it from Ernie or from Philbert that our player has been saying this and that. That's gonna fucking piss me off. Okay? Best way there is, but some, it's not the player's fault actually. It's the advices that they get. Mm. 
Okay, we don't know by whom. The girlfriend, maybe. <laughs> the, the mother, wife, the mother, the mother. Or the mother or the father. Or the Spanish the, friend. Or, maybe, Spanish or the Spanish translator. translator. Or the Spanish contact. Teka, we, a lot of Spanish <laughs> friends. Eh. Korean <laughs> translator. Sandali. <laughs> 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 girlfriend, wife, the father, maybe the mother, maybe even the parents, you know? You boyfriend, about boyfriend. That's a joke on you. Because you're not What I'm saying is, Everybody's got to be a little bit more professional. Okay, I'm not saying this because Ernie's here. I was going to pull it up in the UFL years ago mm. about this all disrespect because of what happened to my player. Supposed to be his nephew or his cousin. No, my nephew. Well, my nephew. I said, no, no. Mas malaking chan ko. Mas may book pa ako kaysa sa kots ng stallion si. Eh, siyempre. You don't know, you don't, you don't know who we're talking about, no? No. Si Dato, pati Dato is... It's Ernie's uh, nephew. Anyway, mm -hmm. the thing there is, professionalism, like I said earlier, we're just maybe about 50%. Uh, it's a good thing there are people like Mel now. Okay, of course, there's things that have to be done. Mel Makasakit, who is a professional coach, sports agent. agent. Yeah. Sports agent. Sports okay. agent. Mm -hmm. The rest of you guys, you need to do something about it also. Uh, don't think you are. You know, I think, I don't know if it's abroad in Europe, it's like here, when you're a broker, you need to get a license. Yeah. My son's studying now, he's working in a bank, in a big bank, but it's Saturday Sundays, he's taking classes for, what do you call broking? No, <laughs> broker. <laughs> Broker's license. Broker's. <laughs> broking la. <laughs> okay, hey, I'm not Anyway, Bro I think in Europe, you can be a sports agent if you don't license. Uh, you cannot, you have, if you want to deal and you, internationally, you have to be a FIFA, Registered. Registered. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So let's let's stop there. Next question. What do you guys think about these Korean coaches and these Korean kids? Damn good fucking players, young ones, seventeen and below, and I mean seventeen up, that are paying a substantial amount to certain uh, Korean coaches that are here in the Philippines. They don't even need a salary. From what I heard, they don't need even a salary from the Uf any UFL club because just from these kids alone. They get a lot. Every single Korean boy that has come here and they're using this as a stepping stone to get to the K-League or maybe other leagues in Asia. You know, uh, I've heard this two, three years ago, Pa. Well, Coach, you know, that's interesting because, you know, when we started Stallions uh, and when they were in the second division, that's why we called the Coringos because we had a lot of Koreans who were based in CPU. Uh, they were all students of Dr. P. Mm -hmm. And the way he handled that, to me, was a proper way. He actually brought the kids here for school first, okay, and fit football second. And it, it's grown to a point now where some of his players are actually, I, before the, the, our podcast, I was getting a text already from one of our former players asking for his release because he's going to be playing in Korea. So it, that's true, it's a stepping stone, but it depends on people who, who are handling uh, the system. In our case, uh, with Dr. P., he did a pretty good job, and it shows because, you know, now with these players, with, with uh, uh, Nam, with P, with the two Lees, Won Young and Ju Young, and Bu Bay Park, they all, all came from that project from CPU. So it, if you do it right, it creates opportunities for, for these players. The thing that I say, you know, I wouldn't mind if it's going to let's say, okay, I'm Indonesian. I bring in Indonesian kids here, they pay me, I take care of them, like what Ernie said, academically, that. But once I start uh, to handle Filipinos, Filipino boys or girls, what have you, and my team, uh, I will be ashamed to do what I believe in if I was in my country, I can do it. You know what I'm saying? If it's in my country, I can do it, what I'm doing here. Mm. But without respecting the Filipino culture, uh, you know, like uh, Christmas breaks, you know what I'm leading up to, no? Uh, Christmas breaks, even New Year, this foreign coach doesn't allow his Filipino boys to go home. Uh, the culture in the Philippines, we're a Christian country, mm. Philippines. Okay, among the few. I think the only one in Southeast Asia, or maybe in Asia. No, I mean Christian. And Christmas is a big thing. So you guys, you need a little heart, man. You know, uh, what, what's going to hurt your team or hurt your players if they, don't, if they go home for a few days, like a week or two? Let them come back home to the families, especially the young players. You know, that's why in the 
pilot episode, ang dami kong sinabi nun. Ang dami kong tinira nun kasi walang respeto sa... Like, I, I will say it again. Yes, football is a culture itself, but Philippines has their own culture. Okay? Maybe in, in your country, you don't uh, celebrate Christmas with your family or New Year or whatever. But you're in the Philippines. So, you know, damn respect these kids. These kids, kawawa naman, takot. Takot. Pero yung may iba na may kumikita na kasi may naglaro sa UFL and all that, may pero pa uwi. I know this for a fact. Anybody can question me this. I know this for a fact because I've spoken to some of the kids. And I'm not talking about this year, I'm talking about even the previous years. Okay? Kawawa naman. Okay lang pag UFL players. Mga matatanda na yan, may itat na yan, may <laughs> pera na yan. May sweldo. May sweldo na, may, may, may sariling buhay yan. Pero yung mga ibang bata, they still need nurturing, you know, they still need to be their families. Kawawa naman. Okay? So, you have any other questions with Ernie? Or we can go to the tweets as uh, exciting um, things. No, I, actually, I was interested in um, the new batch of players that you mm -hmm. guys have brought in. I mean, what's the, what's the mindset going into this one? Obviously, you're defending two titles. It's a difficult yeah. proposition. And you've lost the core of your team. Um, and you've lost the, the extra additions as well, like yeah. Diego Barrera and then Hector Zaghi were dropped during the cup, after the cup. Mm. So now it's a whole new bunch of players. I mean, there's still some holdovers from before, but uh, well, what's, the, what's the mindset going into this well, season? Uh, well, to us, the, the, you know, we still have the core of the team, which is Balot Doctora, uh, Berdic Talia, and Talia. Kuloy, okay? Wilson, mm. okay? These are the core players of the team, and now we have new uh, players from Barota who are also part but of the first team. But eleven? No, the part of the first one. Uh, tatlo. Asama yung goalkeeper. Mm, si Pedro. Kasi Pedro is in this new batch already. Kuloy mm. was the goalkeeper mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. Oh. For, for, for championship seasons for both. Right. Except for your last game. Yes. Your last game, you played the other. No, I mean, for this season, yeah. For the season. For the championship season. Si Wilson Munoz. Si Mu Wilson yeah. Munoz was the starting keeper yeah, for yeah. both. Yeah. We played global for the cup championship and then joined the league. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the backup keeper was Guy uh, during the time. Sigawa right. was Hasigawa. the backup keeper uh, during the time. Okay. Uh, well, with the new batch of players, the one thing that I, I try to avoid really is, is I, you know, it's, <laughs> it's, it's getting players from other teams, especially foreign players. There's a lot of players out there. You know, oh, if you yeah. don't want to play for us, you know, I mean, Tito Filbert's policy is very simple. If you don't want to play for us, then go. Go home. <laughs> why, why, why even bother us? Why ask for money and all these things? Because once we agree on certain things, you know, with the team, with the finances and everything, that's Tito Filbert and JR. You know, JR is, is, is a lawyer. So he handles all the, the legal side in the business. And obviously, Filbert, Alkiros being the owner of Gilligan's, that's why we're styling Gilligan's FC. You know, majority and the bulk of the expenses is being handled by him. So it's not just because we want this player or we don't want this player that, you know, that it's not the way it is. Once we make a commitment and we tell this player that this is what we're going to do, that's what we do. Okay? So with the new players that we have, we've kind of learned from what we've, what we've experienced in the past, right or wrong. Um, and from, from that, we realized that we actually have to go out to bring new players in. Because there's a lot of players here also, a lot of foreign players, and I think we're starting to realize that. Now there's a glut of foreign players that are not at UFL caliber mm -hmm. players. Right. Who's so, in charge of spotting the, the, the talent? I mean, you guys have picked off some really good players that weren't really on the radar before. Yeah. You know what I mean? So who's in charge of that? Well, it's, it's uh, YouTube, Facebook, Tito Filbert, me, and everybody. You know, we, we get suggestions from everybody. Friends. And, yeah, but yeah. every time we, we look at a player first, it's, we, three of us always sit down. You know, with, with, with Rufo and Waco, it's actually Coach Bob Bayono who started the negotiations. J we, talk, we told JR that, hey, JR, why don't you talk to Coach Bob? Because he was the one being the liaison for uh, CF Madrid during right. the time they were here. Mm -hmm. And we were surprised that nobody talked to them except us. That's how we were able to bring, actually, it was Rufo who he wanted. But then Rufo asked us if we could bring uh, Waco along because he had a hard time with, with English. And that's, that's, that's how... And they were just working because the bomb was working as a liaison when yeah. the team came here. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Kung, and I'm sure, pag kento kento sa during dinner time and all mm -hmm. that, siguro Rufo mentioned something about playing outside of Spain. Siguro ganon kaya swerte niyo. We we really approached them, Bob. We really instructed Bob to approach, and Bob actually came to us and said, "Hey, I talked to them. 
you know. So that's how this whole thing started. And we're totally surprised because when Rufo came here, this guy was a down to earth, you know, petty cap guy. You know, he wasn't the type of guy who would, you know, now I don't even know this person anymore. <laughs> I really don't. <coughs> so, I mean, Wako doesn't even talk to us. We don't understand, you know. In the beginning of the season, Philbert bought this airline ticket to come over. Because he said, I want to play for Stallions. Did he so? Yeah. I mean, we, we, he accepted our offer, you know. And we were supposed to go from, you know, with Wako when he arrived, we were supposed to go to our camp straight to Barota. But unfortunately, when he arrived, you know, my cuento, pare. Eh. <laughs> no, when he arrived, he told you, he's tired. He was, uh, he was tired, so rest. So he gave him one day rest. After uh, one or two day rest, to go to Barota, he's sick. So, okay, the camp started a week ago. You're sick, so just rest and tell us when. And then along the way, um, we went to try out, I think, for Loyola. So Randy talked to me to. Oh, the, the ticket issue and all the other stuff, so, okay, if you wanted to go really, you go there. The moment you start training with another team, I don't want you back you in my your, team. You yeah. your money back. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, wait, was there, there was no outside hand? I no. didn't know. Well, I told you already, there was a tweet know. and everything, so, I mean, the way he messaged me and everything, he wanted to come back and everything, so... Honestly, we were supposed to, we were cutting on budget mm. for salaries because mm. since we won, mm. everybody want higher salaries, yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. So we gave them their new contracts. Some of them had lower salaries. Mm. Then the others, we told them, this is what we can afford now mm. because we're cutting down on budgets and everything. They said, yes, sent his ticket right away. The next day, after two days, here's your ticket, come. Because we already agreed. Then arrived. I, you know, there's a, Issue now, quite a number of us, uh, African players were sent back, not by the EFL, but they went, they left after the cup for vacation or something. They landed, I think, in Singapore, but they couldn't come back here because they not know what are you going to do in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. I'm a professional football player. Where's your invitation? Where's your no, time? Suppose yeah. you know that they were deported. I think that's the word. Nobody wants to use the word deport. No. But that's a freaking truth. You are deported. They were not allowed back. entry. They were yes. not allowed entry yeah. to the country. <laughs> yeah, you're not. You, when you're not allowed entry to a certain country, and you're you're sent back to your home country. That's deportation. Okay. So this is what I've warned the UFL before. Uh, now we have to be careful about our foreign players. Like I said, I'm not against it. It's good for us. It's good for Philippine football because a lot of the kids can learn a lot from these guys also. Uh, same like us coaches, we can still learn a lot also, you know, on different aspects of the game. But we need to be careful. Like I said, professionalism, everything's there. Uh, this is shout out maybe to all uh, club owners, club management. If you've got all of this, uh, you've got foreign players, you better damn make sure Papeles, that yes. The papers are no set. Like I said before, some are here as students, but earning money, if ever, playing. If they want to do that, then change their status. Because, you know, what I don't like, personally, is for example, I get, I get you back, I get you in. I don't know you from Dick, uh, whoever. You come in, you're a foreigner. And then there's something that happens. I'll end up being in jail for your screwing up because you didn't fix any papers and all that. I know of a story, I will not say who, but an African player who is very aloof with his co-Africans because when he was playing professionally in Dubai, he was jailed for about a year, I think, when he, his roommate, who he didn't, he didn't know only because they came from different African nations, uh, were hired by a certain club here and played, I think it was, I don't know if it's futsal or, or football, no? Uh, it's what happened. His roommate was dealing with something with drugs. <laughs> and he was gone. The cops came to the condo unit and this boy was there. And then they, they, the rule is like that. If you're in the same household, under yeah. the same roof with this guy, <laughs> but you're not the criminal, you still end up as a criminal, mm. so you jail. So he's very aloof, very aloof now. <laughs> he's very aloof now. I mean, kawawa, because I was wondering when I saw, because I see the Africans together, you see them every time in MP or whatever, right? So you're not a good point. Though. So imagine these are really co-nationals uh, or co-players. 
that doesn't even trust. What more as management? Mm. Uh, we need to be a little bit strict uh, on, on, on stuff like this because it can pull down everyone. Well, you it know, we go chance. You know, that's that's the part that's kind of frustrating. You know, I mean, I think majority of the owners or presidents of the clubs in the UFL, professional people. So you don't have to teach them anymore how to do the proper protocol and everything. And they do that. They try to implement as much as they can. But I also see that the players use that sometimes and abuse it. Okay? And, and it's, they pretend like this is how it's done in their country. Yeah, so what? Mm. You know, in our country, it's, it's this, like is, this. this is law. Okay? But it was, it's still a growing business, which is part of the struggle that we're going through. You know, there's going to be a lot of complications, a lot of things that we have to do. And, and it's good because before we didn't have anything to talk about. Yeah. So all these things, good or bad, is part of growth. growth. Right. Now it just depends on how mature are we in handling these problems. You know what I can just say? Like I've said before, I'll say it again. I keep on repeating, but I'm going to be really... <laughs> If you say, like what Ernie says, that it's, this is the way it's done in your country or where you, other countries that you played at before, okay, and then you're, when you're here, you start criticizing Filipino football, you start criticizing your coach, your Filipino coach, or your Filipino management, and fuck you, what are you doing here? <laughs> Get the fuck out of here and go well, look for another team outside of the that's, Philippines. That's basically but, what so. we went through, you know, and, and talking to some of these players. Like I told you earlier, some of our players claimed that they were the ones running the club. It's like, how dare you say that? You know? Who are you to say that? Were you here when we started everything? Who selected you anyway? Who brought you here in the first place? And then you go out and go to the radio interview and tell them, oh, we were the ones running practice and everything. Are you? Hey, Ernie, you weren't here yet. You're still in the States before you came back to the Philippines. There was a coach here, a national team coach. Everybody fucking believed him. And we found out he was a crook. All right. Uh, he says he knew. Diego Maradona, you know, and what I know of is, uh, because I know this for a fact, because I've experienced this, but I never experienced the envelope. <laughs> it's like this. When you go abroad, it's Coach Meron, sino nga aling talaga? Ano? Hindi bigyan envelope, usually hate letter. Kau talaga. Oi, chain letter ka mo! Chain letter, puta! Anyway. So, sinasabi mo sa akin, oh, envelope na naman. Ustahan tayo, death threat na naman. Okay, sabi ko na nga ba? Oi, love knows. Love death threats. Anyway. We're gonna get to the questions. Hurry up. What I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, when the coaches or the players get to their hotels, regardless of what country, there's already an envelope, mm. you know, thick envelope and green. Okay, yung laman green talaga uh, to sell games like that. And, and we know this. I mean, sorry, huh? no, this is nothing to do with the PFF now, the coaching staff of the national teams now, nothing. It, we're talking about decades ago, decades yeah. ago. Which is good that the Filipino also woke up to it. Yeah, PFF woke up absolutely. To it yeah. So what I'm saying is, you guys wake up, I mean, all the foreigners, okay? Foreign coaches, foreign players, uh, even the field foreigners. Don't look down, because I know for a fact that some of you look down on the Filipino uh, player, or Filipino fans, or even Filipino commentators. Hey! You know where's <laughs> What? No, they're six footers, you're five one. Uh, no, nah, yeah, 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 yeah. Nah, nah, I look down at you. Yeah, everybody does. Every day I look down at you. Summer. Anyway. <laughs> Jeans. <laughs> no, what I'm saying is, uh, Come here, you stay here, you're sports, welcome, yeah. right? You're welcome. But, naman, uh, you know, help out in self criticizing. Absolutely. Help out. Okay, now we go to the. To questions, all right? Let's start off with uh, PB Ruiz. Uh, by the way, thank you to everybody who's been sending in questions. Awesome stuff. Uh, we really appreciate it. So, the first one is question for Coach Ernie. Why all of a sudden you destroy the core of your championship team? Don't you believe you're reading the wrong thing? Eh? What? Yeah, that's okay. This is a question. Is a question. Yeah, yeah. It's not bad. It's from the same person. Same, same person, okay. but not the question. Yeah, no, that's no. out. Why all of a sudden it changed? Hey, Nako, Coach Hans. Hey, Nako, Coach Hans. Hey, Nako, Coach Hans. Hey, Nako, Coach Hans. Coach, wear your glasses. Wear your glasses. Ibang kita siya sabi ko. Iris, 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 iris. Nako, Delica. Okay, okay. Okay, go. I think we tackled this a little bit a while ago. I'll answer anyway. I mean, Pee Wee is one of our fans and, you know, he's very open about... You just explained it. Not liking what I when I do certain things, but I respect that because he doesn't hide behind the alias. So out of respect for him, I'll answer it. The core of the team 
It's the team. It's not the players. Coaches, players will come and go. You know, people forget this team, the core of this team, the heart of this team. It's actually in Barota Nuevo. And that will never, never disappear. Okay? Some players come and go, like I said, because they don't want to play for us. They want extra money. They want uh, other opportunities. But in the end of the season, uh, I think it's more specific about Rufo. Yeah, we, we, we never said we don't want him. We even fought for him. He's the one who's telling people he didn't, doesn't have a contract with us. In the contrary, we believe he has a contract with us. So we, don't want, we didn't want these players to leave. We offered them a contract the very last day when we knew we won the league. We had our dinner, and the very first thing we did as responsible managers, we sat down with every single player and told them right there and there, this is what we can offer you. You have the right to say yes or no. Those who said, coach, I want to explore other options, no problem. Okay? And honestly, during that meeting, they were talking to the business managers. You know, I just gave my recommendations. So my partners were the ones saying, this is what we can offer you. We try not to tackle both financial and technical matters all at the same time, because you, you, your judgment is clouded. But no, we didn't try to destroy the continuity. We want continuity. That's why we have our captain there. That's why we have our other players there. But if a player doesn't want to play for you for whatever reason, you can't hold a gun to their head and say, no, you know, I have your passport. You can't go anywhere. No, that sounds familiar. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so, exactly. familiar. so we okay. never did that to anybody. Second question, Ernie. You allege that some of your, the same from PV again. Yeah. Mm. You allege that some of your former foreign players bad mouth with Pinoy's. Who are these players? Oh, it's Rufo and Waco. They had an interview. Gosh, I submitted the proof to the UFL. What did they say? <laughs> I'll leave this it. This is the interview of, in Spain. Yeah, yeah, in Spain. 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 Spanish. Uh, my Spanish is really bad, so I might <laughs> misinterpret things. You don't know Spanish, Tony. Nah, you know? when, 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 <laughs> when, when they said certain things, and you know, when I first heard it, the date went live. You know, a concerned friend sent me the link. Bad mouth, as in bad mouth? Yeah. What did they say? What, 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 what Filipinos in general? I, yeah. Filipino football, can, Italians, players, coaches, well, what? Everything. Okay, even their women. Okay, so that's why I, we got so pissed. They, what, well, that's why, coach, that's why I'm so pissed, okay? That's why I'm so pissed and I don't understand why these people don't understand. But that's okay. But see, it's part of this proof that we submitted to the UFL. So I don't want to discuss it without influencing what they're trying to go through. Okay? But it's public knowledge. It's there. Download it. Have it translated if you want to. Can you send us this link? Yeah, sure. Where I even, I, I, I kind of, it, it was in the stallion page. So when that happened, I gave it to Philbert and Jared said, can you have this translated? My understanding is... I, I'm, not, I, I'm not fluent in Spanish, but I'm pissed. Philbert, so I don't you, know if can, I'm right. Can you do this in a way where it's already in English or in Tagalog? We did. We had it translated awesome. to the US. Yeah, we, we, yeah, we'd love to be able to tweet that. Um, and and it's, he has the not, fucking balls to come back and play for another club. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I want to hear well, first and, what he's going to say. And, yeah, in, yeah, all, yeah. in all honesty, it was, Waco was more quiet than Rufo in the interview. Rufo was the one who was kind of more... You know. well, obviously, we can't chastise the guy without uh, yeah. knowing exactly That's what right. we want to see that. I want to see that. So, I hear it. Definitely. Ah, you know, I, it's, it's not like it's not out there. Yeah. That's why I'm wondering how people are so mad at me. Like, why am I trying to knock him? I, I'm pissed. Yeah. You know, I'm a Filipino. If you talk, down, uh, talk about me like that, about my countrymen, about women here, about a the culture, then I'm, I'm pissed. So. Okay, let's move on. It's new to me, huh? About it's to, not new coach. No, I, no, say, I heard what, from what I heard from Rufo's interviews about his case, but yeah. I didn't know about yeah. this. Yeah. About well, it depends on what they want to write about. That's the one thing I get pissed with some of the writers. They just write what they want to write about, you know? So just like when you show a game film and you just show that part yeah. mm -hmm. and not show the whole content, I then you won't know. Oh, I, it's not offside. Yes, it's offside. Oh, but I didn't see that. First part, if you show the whole thing then. No, we gotta get, we gotta get to the bottom. Yes, we gotta get to, obviously there's been okay. a lot of there's been a lot of talk about the Philippine national women's team and uh, there's been a lot of controversy about, I don't know, tickets and, mm -hmm. um, you know, travel agencies and all, all, all kinds of things that we really don't know the context to. We don't know what's going on, but obviously we, we have to ask you mm -hmm. this question. Um, apparently there has been a, a, an issue with the travel agent. Is this from Peewee also? Okay. Yes. That's not Peewee, huh? That's not Peewee, huh? That's not last. Okay. <laughs> well, Coach Ernie, from Peewee again. Mm -hmm. Last question of PV. Mm. 
Can you please name the alleged travel agent who booked the tickets of the Malditas? It's not a travel agent, it's a travel agency. Okay. You know, why does he want to know? Does he want to book a ticket? <laughs> I, I want to know. I mean, what's, 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 what's the issue? You know, you, you want to know why? You let me know. I'll answer you. No, I think, Ernie, well, here I go with Ernie again. <laughs> Ernie, the thing that is, in my, it's been coming up on, well, I also read it on in Facebook. It's not just all like, yeah, a, it's in a, like a blog or uh, something like that. Whatever, about uh, the, 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 the one or two of your Malditas of mm. Philams were complaining of so and so. And then uh, your reply was because you were the one that booked it. The, you were the guys who booked the tickets, but mm. it was a travel agency. Mm. So I think that's what this uh, question of TV Well, so is. the concern is not the, the travel agency. The concern is with the players having problems with the tickets, mm -hmm. right? So that's not, I think that's what they want to ask. Okay, well, what was, just a, just a bit of a background for mm. everybody who wasn't clear on it. Yeah, there was some issues with the ticketing. What, what, what is the background to that entire situation? Well, I'll, you know, uh, one of our players, uh, her, she had a flight from Manila all the way to the United States and from LAX to LAX and from LAX to Detroit, okay? Uh, her ticket was booked, you know, from Manila all the way to Detroit. Unfortunately, she had a problem with the Det uh, LAX to Detroit ticket, okay? But not with her Manila to Detroit ticket. Uh, I think she tweeted that uh, I booked the ticket with a stolen, stolen credit card, yeah. okay? So I said, I'm a coach, not a travel agent. That's how this whole thing kind of started. But, and a lot of people, a lot of critics who don't like me kind of jumped on it and everything. So, yeah. Coach, I, I'll ask you a couple of questions so that people will understand. Because I think you go you to ask this. Me, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I know, kaya nga. <laughs> okay, when, go, you go. Book, when you go to the uni games for the yeah. LaSalle players, who handles the booking? From the office, uh, go to either straight to, because here in Philippines, we have connections, mm. right? Mm. So I go with mga lasalista, mm. those who are like in Cebu Pak, director, mm. and teach the office. This is years ago, and that's what we do all the time now. Straight to that person in Cebu Pak, mm. and give the special price for the DLSU delegation. Yung that's, that's pretty standard, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, is there so, so, something wrong with that? You go through some, some channels. Yeah. You have to go through some channels. Is there something wrong with that? No. And your intention in doing that is so that you can get a good price, like of you course, said? Of course, of course. But I'm okay. So then, when you book it, do you book it individually or as a group? Group. Okay. So when you book it as a group, and then let's say our sons who play for you, you know, and this has happened a few yeah, times, yeah, yeah. decide that they have to come home early for whatever reason, what happens? Do you allow them to change their tickets? Yeah. Okay. They, I leave them, I let them go on their own because the office has other things to take care of. Yeah. Because we're a delegation of over 100. No, so. right, exactly. But when they change the tickets, don't the, the, our sons pay for the change? Me? Okay. Yeah, personally, I really don't care anymore because it's a problem. I was telling them, but I'm going to say you I have the same okay. sentiment, coach. Mm. Diba? Mm. Pero, ikaw yung nag handle it. Eh. So, sa, sa mga utak ng mga tao, eh, si coach ang nag book ng ticket namin. It's the same situation that's what happening. I do, what I do, Ernie, is like that time, was it last year or the other year? Two mm. years now, twice now. Ernie and uh, Ernie. Matt, uh, Matt, Matt and Phil and, 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 Bertuloy. And Nathan. And Nathan. They told me about this, and I think you, met, you, you, you called me first about it. I said no problem, but I told uh, our girl in the office who was mm. doing all the booking yeah. that, oh, you see, Matt and see Nate, kailan mo yung kagad maga kasi may laro mm. na iba ganon ganon. Sabi ko, can you do something about it? Which they did the money. They tried. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They tried. 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 They Whoever that player is, they have to pay for their own airfare, yeah. correct? Yeah. That's pretty standard. Because if you change the group booking, mm. it has to change. You have to you change, change everything. everything. Correct. correct. Yes, yes, yes. Now, how do you think we handle the booking of our players individually or as a group? Group. As a group. So if one player requests to change the booking, does it affect that one player or the group? The group. The group. Okay. Now, when we book tickets for our players. And we actually do it for our players, but not for our families. Because we actually have our travel agents who handle it for our families. So it's kind of, this is kind of crazy. But anyway, we'll answer it, okay? Be just because I took the request of the player for a booking and everything, doesn't mean I did it myself. 
Okay. The policy that we have in this case with the PSC, POC, and the PFF is we can only book players for major airports. Manila, LAX, Manila, Chicago, Manila, San Francisco, Manila, New York. Direct. Major, Direct. major mm -hmm. airports so that the price is low. If you have a connecting flight, the Federation, the POC, PSC cannot pay for that. We pay for it. Okay. In this case, the connecting flight from the LAX to Detroit was not part of the booking or the the uh, yung sagot ng federation on the POC. And this time, POC was the one uh, in PSC because it's for the SEA Games. Right? So when you book tickets like that, you are given a budget. You know that, coach. You have to go to PSC yeah. Travel. Yeah. PSC Travel, they're booking lots of players. So they say, kayo na maghanap. Ito yung guide nyo. You cannot go over this amount of money. Okay? Oh, sige. So we talk to one, two, three travel agents who can help us. Okay? So it's not just one travel agency. You handle this whole booking for us. Okay? So when you do all these things, and then when you make changes to group bookings, it affects everybody, not just one single person. And for whatever reason, they don't understand this. It why? Horrible. I'll tell you why. Because then when you tell them, well, you look. If you make a change, it's going to be hard. Why? First of all, you have to get the same fare rate. You have the same booking class. If those seats are not available, what do they do? They tell you the next day or the day after. It cannot be the same flight that you want. Okay? So there are certain things that, that goes on that what are you going to explain all these things to the player? So we discourage these things from happening. Now, within our group itself, okay, when we deal with expenses and everything, we deal with it properly. Technical, business. And we have protocols. So if a player would actually make a request and say, Tito Philbert, pwede ba natin gawin to? Sinabihan na kita, wag ka na magsichange ng booking, gagastos na naman tayo nito. Ano ang gagawin natin nito? Ano ang gagawin natin nito? Kailangan natin anuhin to. Wait. I want to know, how did this come about? How come it was all in the Facebook, social network? Well, how did it come about? Well, I think the player tweeted it, yeah. okay? Yeah. And then yeah. all these other people who don't like me jumped on it and created different accounts, pretend that somebody else, and then retweeted, retweeted, and it's there. Not knowing what happened. Nobody even bothered to ask me. Do you know that? Mm. There's only one reporter who came to me and asked me, Coach, what happened? Sinabi la, gumamit ka lang stolen credit card. Well, I have, I think, 10. That's why, where did that stolen credit card come about? I kind of have, you know, a lot of these things, man. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't think I need any more. Okay. So it's it's an insult. I think my gold I have a diamond gold. So that, that, that player who got <laughs> stuck at LAX, <laughs> she had requested to leave early or yeah, yeah, yeah. to be okay, booked uh, a flight. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you. Let me to Philbert. He knows. Take a the story. Yeah. I read also from a report that it was not only that player Lee. Was it Lee? Something Lee? Monica Lee. The Lee's a family name, right? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then it, was, it wasn't only she. There was somebody else. Now, then, was it a tweet that I read? No, I must say it was some from, from Facebook I read. I not, I no name. There was no name. They just mentioned Yung the nanay. player. They just Yung nanay. That's Mo Monica. Ah, no, nanay, no. Yeah, nanay, yeah, but no name. Mother of, not of, of Monica Lee. Yeah, yeah. Mother another, of, another, else. another, another player. Yeah. That said yes. that also, nga, nagka problema daw yung anak niya. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yung Christmas uh, celebration of family was cut short. <laughs> <Yeah, yeah, yeah. laughs> also like that. So, hindi lang isa pala. The plane always late. Mm, so, and, yun lang. And, huh? Is this true or is this not true? No, the other, the other, the other one that was delayed. Okay, go. There was nothing wrong with the ticket. There was something wrong with the plane of PAL. Well, they the, couldn't flight leave. The, the flight was cancelled for that night. So, okay. two players were there. Okay. Flight was cancelled. They were, they were placed put up in hotel. hotel. These two players, players, Monica Lee was not. No, no. 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 Monica no. left earlier. Okay, okay, okay. They were supposed to leave on the 22nd, I think. Everybody was booked on the 22nd. Yes, everybody because was booked. Because we did not qualify for the SEA Games. Some players suddenly had emergencies. Coach, I have to go home early. I have a job. Uh, somebody's going to take care of my dogs. Everything became an emergency. Oh. I'm not kidding, Coach. Okay, okay. okay? Usually, And so we had to change all the bookings. And I told Ernie, you did experience this. We changed bookings. We learned already. Yeah. Change bookings, we have problems. Yeah. Please tell all you of them. You didn't want people to change. Don't, when, don't. Don't. I said, don't change. I don't care. They can buy their own ticket if they want, mm. but here's your ticket. This is your date. 
Anyway, if you change that, there'll be problems. It was clear to them. We will change. We will try to change your tickets yeah, to give right, you right. the best. Mm. So there were delays, basically, because it's December. Mm. December 22, 23, 21. It's all... Some really, left on the 17th, really some 18th. Season. Peak season. It is peak season. If it was any other month, it would have been... No problem. No problem. problem. Easier, yeah. yeah. It would have been easier. But this was December. It was really hard uh, getting good bookings, good time schedules. Uh, Cheap rates yeah. for December. There's no, there were no cheap rates. December, huh? yeah. this is December, and we had guidelines as far as how much we could spend. So, know, so. we and tried you guys to book these tickets way before, pa. No, way before even you left. No, yun nga isa pa ng yari. Because we did, we booked them for before Thanksgiving for the US. But guess oh. what? Oh. Tito, I'm sorry, but I have an emergency. I cannot fly from Miami. I have to fly from my hometown. Mm. Okay. Oh, Tito, I have exams. I cannot leave on the 24th. I had to leave in December. This is before. before. Yeah. Before. So before they came. Before they came. Before they yes, came. yes. All right. But all the all dates the going home was going home was six. all set. 22. All set. All Everybody. Set. 22. Okay. Okay. That was set. That was all booked. Finished. Mm. But since we didn't qualify, that's when people start saying, oh, "Can I go home early? Mm. Can I do this? Can I do that?" Mm. So Peter Philbert said, "No." We had a meeting with the players. He said, "No." But I had an emergency. So. And that's our problem of trying to be too accommodating. It's my fault. Kind hard. He's yeah, kind hard. Fault. He's kind hard. Okay. Yeah. And some of our players even. Uh, this is how you can get really upset when you think about it. Some of our players very understanding. We had some players who had to stay in the airport seven, eight, nine, ten hours. And I tell them, uh, can I do something to make it? No, coach, I'm fine. Don't worry about me. Some of our players said, coach. Mm. 12 hour layover, oh my God! What am I supposed to do? My mom doesn't want me to stay there. Okay, don't panic. There's a business lounge. Pay for the business lounge. When you get back, I'll be in mercy. Uh, okay, goes to the business lounge, stays there. Wi-Fi, all Wi -Fi, the stuff. food, sleep, everything. And then we're accused of not taking care of the player. We have done things for these players that we have not done Actually, for our local really players before. It's, it's, and, you know, it's only for a few head problems. Did we have problems? Yes. It, was it the player's fault? No. Could it have it been avoided? Definitely. How? Don't change your booking. Period. If you change your booking, guess what happens? You don't get the same fare class. You don't get the same seat. You don't get the same schedule. And there, there are conditions in changing. Huh? Coach, I want to change, but please make sure it's only one hour layover in here. So, Come on! Same with the Southeast Asian Games. Uh, tickets, all the delegations left on the 4th. So we were booked yeah. all on the 4th. 4th, including us. And huh? going home on the 23rd? 24th. 24th, anyway. That's yeah. the end. What, what day was the end of the Sea Games? 22. 22. 22. Yeah, we had to go to Singapore. That's how it's because uh, PSC got a group booking. Mm. So since we were not going to, we can't go two days before. You have to go only two days before the competition. Yeah. Since it was way, way before the competition, we told the PSC that. We have to rebook this. Then they told us, you have to do it on your own because if we change it, it changes the whole delegation. Of so last minute, we have to make changes. This is December. You're dealing with peak season. You're dealing with changes. You're dealing with 20 players and staff to book things. And then you start to deal with changes. And then you start to deal with emergencies. I have to suddenly, I have a work interview. I have to attend this. Right. I have to, so suddenly everything became an emergency. Those who did not change, those who did not mind, didn't have any problems at all. Okay. All right. So, so there's changes uh, in the schedule, uh, changing, you know, yeah, but tickets. We, we have to also touch on that that's part, that the corruption thing, that kind of pisses mm. me off. Mm. You know, we're talking about corruption, again. What corruption? They, they, they send mm. tweets in the Facebook no. They're accusing me of corruption. There's a report about me, about corruption, about we're stealing our own money. Since we paid for the ticket, that's that kind of stupid, right? Silver Pare, tito lang kung pera natin dalawa. Wag kang sasabi kay Pilino. Now they think we just like to make it clear the the fans out there, people who tweet, uh, all of this we we advance it first. Uh, we don't get the money ahead of time, and we just ask to be reimbursed, basically. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if we steal anything, I think I don't think we're not, we're not stealing anything because we're advancing everything, so we're stealing our. You're basically pissing off people who's been supporting the national team, 
we go away, then it's start from scratch. So let's talk about the Sea Games. Um, we don't have much time left, um, mm. but the Sea yeah. yeah, the Sea Games. Um, before we talk about uh, the All Star Pinay All Stars and all of that, um, there was a lot of hype surrounding the Malditas mm. going into the Sea Games. Obviously, because the under 23s had not been sent, mm. so there was a lot of pressure on the team, and uh, the results didn't go our way. No. It, it wasn't a, um, the greatest performance. Uh, we we it we was took, our worst performance. Yeah, we took some really difficult um, and worst. It's not the worst. No. <laughs> we took some for, for this team. For this team. Uh, for this team. But we took some difficult really worst yeah, yeah. results. Um, what, what was you know? What was the learning after that? Um, what was the mood of your camp? Um, and is this something that you guys want to continue doing uh, for the future and moving forward uh, as um, as the heads of the national team? Well, we we definitely want to improve on mm. our performance, but you know. I have to give credit to the girls, okay? I, this is the part that I get so pissed when people start to talk about it. Like, Lito Filbert, he's even mad. It's not the worst. Because they played really hard. We just had a bad game. Can't you just accept it and move on? We had a bad game. Vietnam played really well. We played really bad. Thailand won the SEA Games. 1-0 or 2-1? I think it was like 2-1 or 1-0. Against? Against Vietnam. Vietnam. We dominated Thailand. We lost to Thailand 1-0. We're not a 7-0 team. These girls are not a 7-0 team. They play their hearts out. But unfortunately, that day, when, when we first, it, it was a carryover. We played Myanmar, and we were in shock. 25,000 people screaming. We couldn't hear each other. The girls, <laughs> our eyes were like. <laughs> With the drums this. and everything. Okay. The air with the headlights on, it's like this. They were Culture in shock. shock. You know, they couldn't adjust. First time. Been first goal, stayed punched there. by the so goalkeeper. Hit by a, a, a player, foul, no foul, no. Okay, but they still played hard, you know. But then, the part on Vietnam, I will let Tito Filbert explain because he has better explanation than me. <laughs> now they ask, how come we lost seven zero to Vietnam? Who asked? No reporters. Uh, we uh, went to there, report uh, now. Media there. PFF, 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 PFF. So well, my explanation is, if you watch the game, if you can watch the video of the game. How we played now, and we played what two, three years ago? Even two years ago. Versus a Vietnam, or okay. Now we played. We we possessed the ball. We controlled. We had attempts on goal. We had so many attacks and attempts on goal, and Vietnam respected us. But we just had too many mistakes. easy mistakes yeah. that counters. We got the ball easily, attack, kicked it, and not not our day. It was 2-0 at half time. Yeah. Who's your half time? And then this bunch of goals happened all and the same we, time. I told Ernie, Ernie, um, he, Ernie was worried about the score, so I told Ernie, Ernie, no, don't worry about the score. Let's just play. Let's play how we want to play. Let's let's do what we thought the girls would do. We didn't come here just to defend, okay? So we had to push. We told the girls to play, play their game, all, all till the end. So they didn't mind the lot of scores, but. We had lots of attempts too, mm. basically. We had attacks and attempts. So they made everybody happy, the crowds yeah. happy, because the, the match was really not... Were we outclassed that day? Yes. Are they better than us? No. I don't think so. Both, both. You're talking about both teams? Yeah. yeah. If we played in men, it's not going to be that score. Nah, they're more consistent. I would, uh -huh. I would, they're more consistent than us. Yeah. We have to put a really more consistent team. Talent's there, but the mm. consistency. Let's give somebody else a chance for his question. He's from Junix, Panaloto. I was at a game where the Pinay Football All-Stars tied the Malditas. How come none of those were brought in SEA Games? Oh, that's not correct. <laughs> nah. <laughs> I think seven of them were in the SEA Games team. Because my daughter was there. His daughter no, was there. No, anyway, <laughs> when it comes to the SEA Games or AFF, AFC, yeah. we invite. We invite all, all schools, yeah. players. Okay, the, the, the usual problem, man. Uh, yeah. Not releasing, other coaches don't like yeah. to release. Southeast Asian Games was uh, the time of the UAAP. Yeah, yes. So, you know, Palacios got injured. Tryouts were, they, they couldn't try out because they're busy with uh, school. school and the yeah. UAAP. So, I guess we have to tell them also oh, tryouts for Malditas, there's no specific time. It's open every day. Anybody can come to us and try out. There's no special invitation. There's, we don't need a special letter. Just come, please, and try out. You know, before we had the foreigners come in, we had all local girls. And we were 
hoping that they, we could merge them together, but then suddenly they couldn't go. Right. So what's I mean, this is uh, this is uh, what they did is because there was a tweet question, uh, something to, of this sort, like saying uh, before it was all local born girls, then now only five or six locals. Uh, I think you answered that already. Yeah. Where are they? I, I want to know where they are. Why did they only go to the All Star Game and not our tryouts? Right. So. Um, yeah, we, we were running out of time here, but there has been a few questions about a women's league coming up. Now yeah. you, you're talking about the local talent being nurtured. Yeah. Uh, the UFL is trying to do that yeah. uh, with the men's national team and providing yeah. players who are based here in the Philippines to play for our country. Are you guys looking forward? Uh, I hear that there has been a, a Facebook post about a, a women's league coming yes. soon. Um, yeah. well, what's the what's the details? Well, of this? people always say, you know, what's the PFF doing? Well, this is one of those things that is pioneered by the PFF. This is the idea of the president himself. We had a meeting, he brought us in and said, we want to allocate money specifically to create a league for the women's. Wow. And that's where we're in that process. Uh, we're supposed to meet tomorrow to get the details ironed out. But we had a brainstorming session. The PFF president was there. Our general secretary was there. Uh, and a lot of Pinay football was there. Chris Nolan was there. Team captain, Mario Benitez was there. So we talked about it. And we're supposed to meet tomorrow and come, you know, hopefully in our next meeting we'll be able to give you more details. Is it like a time scale to when you guys want to launch? Yeah, it? Um, actually this summer is something that we want to start, to start, wow. start off. It's going to be local. The, the, the big vision is to do it nationwide. Yeah. But we want to come up with a best, best known method first on how to start. start it properly. And then so that we can continuously grow. I've got ideas for you guys because I was planning this, this is almost a year yeah. now. Mm. We had a meeting, we had a meeting yeah. before. I told you that I have this big sponsor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and actually, I, I just texted a few days ago on what's the feeling of their boss, mm. the foreign boss, about this. I've got some special rules that I want to put in <laughs> so to get balanced competition. <laughs> yeah. Not, if we don't do this route, I, I think I mentioned about this. Uh, we're in. You must play. You must play for the birthplace, birth province. Mm. If you're from Davao. Do you play if for you're studying here, that's making difference. You don't, you don't play for it. You, you go back there, club team. Davao. <laughs> you go play for Davao. Right. Because if we don't do this, then there'll be only a few teams. Mm. And and I'm glad. I'm very glad for women's football, at least in the collegiate level now, that it's not anymore confined to just a few number of provinces. There are a lot of girls now playing from different provinces that you've never heard of, which is good. Which is good for for women's football here in the Philippines. And. Uh, if that can happen, if I want, I'd like to get on board with this also to yeah, help, yeah, help out. Because, Oof. like I said, I want to help out the boys, men's football. They can go with <laughs> uh, do that already. Uh, I think I want to help with the women. Not, not only that, coach, uh, we're asking females to be involved in the women's committee. It's kind of strange that we have a PFF women's committee and we don't have females. <laughs> it's all guys. And we're telling them, hey, <laughs> be part of it. Right, right. I mean, they they have to be proactive and do it. Right. They can't just wait for us to. You know, and I don't know where these things come from. We're saying that we we're not encouraging inclusion of females and coaches and everything. Since there's some small, there's some small bunch of girls now. Yeah, I, I mean, this uh, starting to help. Since 2005, you know, when Coach Maro was handling the team, I think you know we've always said we want female coaches on board. 2008, when Coach Hans was the uh, coach of the women's national team, when we went to Thailand and I was a team manager, he brought Merle Asibar with him. So it's always been there. But they have to take it to the next level. I think now with the licensing courses and with the A-licensed coaches that we have, I think that's a great step. Okay, now we have to now get more female referees, right. more coaches, more female business women who's going to put up teams, you know, and more people who want to volunteer, like girls in Pinay football. Yes. You know, these are things that to me is very positive, but they have to fight. It can't be handed on a silver platter and say, here, take it. You, gotta work. You, know, you want to come in? Show us your idea. Show us your concept. Because we've been doing this for a while. We just don't want to hand it over right. you know, and say, okay, go ahead. That's it. No, it's not going to work that way. We want the structure to be put in place. Then we can step back and say, please. We, we, need, we need more pitches yep. and free pitches. Yeah. Because <laughs> football is becoming especially too expensive. In, in, because you have especially to the Los Bell, yeah. free pitch. First to be able you to have to pay now to play football, not like before. You talk to the right people. Man. I, I hate to cut this conversation off. It's, uh, <laughs> it's been a fun chat with uh, 
Filbert and uh, Coach. This will not be the last. We look at this guy. Yeah, you know, I mean, a lot of people like to uh, <laughs> criticize to and, and, you know, uh, <laughs> yeah. throw a lot of hate your way. Um, we, oh, appreciate, don't worry about we appreciate the fact that you've come here and, and, and talk to us, you know, yeah. at worst face to worst. So it's a lot of fun to do this, and hopefully we can talk to you again. Um, hands on <laughs> NMF, of course, on Twitter. Uh, follow us there. Uh, we, we might put in a little bit more information there. We're going to get the links to um, um, that, that interview yeah. that I really <laughs> wanted as well. Um, sorry, Ange, what was that? Oh, yes, that's right. Uh, thank you to the uh, Box Studios for uh, holding us here. Um, what else? What else should we be playing? Can, can we thank our sponsors? I absolutely, go for it. Uh, for the Women's National Team, you know, Philippine Football Federation, PSC POC, for supporting us. Yes, then yes. our, our uh, kit sponsor, Mitre, uh, Mel Makasakit uh, and Mel Max Sports, he's the one who's been getting all these sponsors uh, for the Women's National Team. Gilligan is the main sponsor. You know, who's been helping us ever you know, since? Ever since, <laughs> with food, with everything. Yeah, Pancor, yeah, Pancor, because yeah. Pancor, they've been providing us the housing every time we have camp. Right. So Pancor and the staff, Pancor and the staff in Pancor and Anvil. Thank you very much. Very, very uh, helpful. So as the South Football Club, once again, thank you very much for supporting the program and all of you who have been uh, watching the shows week in, week out. We love you guys. Thank you for the support and you allow us to do this job, which is amazing. So thank you so much. And we'll catch you guys next week. Good luck in Archers later. And our next guest will be, you'll know when we know. <laughs> hey, let me know. <laughs> 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 you know.